Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to continue our discussion about statistics, right? There are two main branches of statistics. So when we talk about statistics, there are many offshoots of these, but in general, we're doing one of two things. We're either trying to describe the data, so there's descriptive statistics, and that could be data, that's usually data of a sample, right? So I'm trying to describe these things. Or there's the idea of inferring from the sample to the population. So we call this inferential statistics. When we're describing the data, that's where taking a mean, taking an average of all the, the points that you have, the data points that you have, uh, taking a standard deviation, doing a box plot, these are all things that just describe what the data looks like. Okay, so stem and leaf plots, all of these are just describing what do you have. Okay, inferential statistics is where kind of, in my mind, um, certainly this is where we want to be, right? This is where the good stuff is. So you can do inferential statistics in about three ways. There's point est estimation, Right? Point estimation is where we simply take some, something that describes the sample and says this also describes the population. Okay, so what that means is if we took a mean of the sample, right? So this is the sample mean. And this is some group that is indicative of the population, right? So you're constantly in your head keeping this picture in mind that the population is really big and the sample is taken out of that population, right, and is not so big, then you are going to start seeing where this falls apart a little bit, right? So if I just say the sample mean is exactly the same as the population mean, which is designated by mu. That is saying a lot, folks, because that's really saying that my sample is so absolutely true of the population that if I have one person within this population that's not represented by the sample, I don't care. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It's a big statement. Let's just put it that way. People do it all the time, but it's a big statement to say that. If you have a huge sample of the population, so if your sample doesn't look like this, but looks more like that, right? Then maybe you can start saying, well, that's pretty close. But you gotta have to make this work. Your sample size, right? Which your sample size is shown by N. And the difference in the last video, I didn't say this. I said N is basically true for both. Well, in the population, we just capitalize it, right? So we're saying that our sample size here is basically so big that it basically enc encompasses the population, more or less. Right? So when you're doing point estimation, you're saying, I think I've captured it because I've gotten just about anyone. And when you're talking about something really, really specific, you might just capture just about everyone who has that particular uh, characteristic that you want to find. Okay, so point estimation doesn't always fall apart. Um, it just sometimes does. All right, so there's point estimation. There is the joy of interval estimation. Mm. What is interval estimation? Interval estimation is starting to hedge our bets a little bit, right? So instead of saying that the sample works for 100% of the population, we start to say, well, we think this works for 90% of the population, right? So we have confidence intervals. This is where confidence intervals come in. Oh yeah, I have a squeaky marker. So this is when you can say, I think this works for, um, 
Let me do this in blue. I think this works for 90% of the population. I'm fairly confident that 90% of the population are covered by the statistics that I've run on my sample and now I'm inferring to the population. It also, and you can have 90% confidence, you can have 95% confidence, you can have 99% confidence. But it's still leaving some room that basically, I'm not entirely sure this works for every single, um, every single data point within my population. I'm not sure that this works for every single subject in my population, but I have some confidence that it's gonna work for the majority of them, okay? So 90% confidence intervals, 95, we typically go with the 95%, okay? Which is where the p-value of 0 0.05 comes from. When you're doing the p-value of 0 0.05 and you're saying to yourself, is that good? Well, that comes from 95%, right? So you're saying this is working for the majority of my population. Okay, that's awesome. The last one, which I tend to like quite a lot, is hypothesis t testing. And that's kind of its own thing, so we're gonna cover that in a separate video. But hypothesis testing is kind of, I, I think for the vast majority of the time, for a lot of things, that's kind of the bread and butter of many statisticians. So that's where we're talking about finding what the null is, so having a null hypothesis, kind of a baseline versus what we think might happen, um, and then testing whether that actually is true or not. All right, we'll talk about that next. Until next time, I bid you adieu.